So down here is the motor protector. Let's see if we got equal amber all in this motor, if it'll reset. So that's 466, 468, 465. 6, 17, 18, 19, 19, 13, 62. What the heck? This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys. So we're working on an air conditioner. It's hot deck, cold deck. So you got steam coming in here. In one section, you got a compressor down here that cools the other section. What they've got is this thing uh, is not working, obviously. And it's always a good sign when you see big jugs of refrigerant up here. That tells you everything's good. So we go on over to this turkey, and this is the one that wasn't running. So I just reset the motor protector, and it ran for a little bit. Made a little bit of a squeal. I don't know if it's bearings are jacked to the max or what, but wholesome goodness. Not hot, so the uh, steam is off, which is good. So down here is the motor protector, and there's the big old train compressor. Let's see if we got equal amber all in this motor, if it'll reset. Okay, we got a little bit better light now. So we're gonna go ahead and check our voltage. We've been having issues, it sounds like, in this town. So it's 466, 468, 465. Sounds about right. Don't know what it is down below here. Our is the protector. We got Alan Bradley here. I'm trying to see what our, yeah, you can see the little orange or yellowish not a light but it's like a, a fluorescent the other one i believe is the compressor all right well what we're going to do we're going to clamp this thing and see what kind of amber we're pulling nothing on bottom so we should be okay to move these wires a little bit not always good when you see wires that are kind of wire nutted and stuff so let's see what we got in the old amp range here 6, 17, 18, 19, 19, 13, 62, what the heck? So no way to shut it down. Maybe that'll do it. So we're pulling 62 amps on the one leg. That's pretty wild. Get our meter ready for voltage check and let's check voltage and see if the voltages are equal, which kind of weird that only one of them is super stupid high like that it makes me wonder if you got something short and partially to ground or something wacko uh, it's gonna take a while for that to cool down unfortunately so we'll have to check that voltage here in a second while we're waiting on that I went ahead and checked these wires here that are dead because obviously because the contactor is um, broke right now now the rest of them obviously are live that's tight not real thrilled screwing around in there. So we follow that up. It probably goes right over here to the motor, which it's a freaking hazard trip zone here, trying to get over to it. Comes across. up to the motor there I'm gonna pull that apart and check the connections in there and see how they are yeah this is fantastic we got her apart it didn't come apart very easily I have to look in there Seem like they're original from like 40, 50 years ago. I'm gonna check resistance to ground in between the windings, see what we got. Honestly, this is basically a chiller. It's water to air. You got a flow control valve here for the water. 
that's going to go over based off the of discharge pressure right there. So as the pressure goes up, it lets more water through. Uh, this is the other unit, 10 horsepower motor, 13.5. That's the evaporator fan. Yeah, evaporator fan, 13.5. That's about where we should be at. That's how they was on most of them, except for the one. I don't see how we could have just one leg that was open. Um, I think what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and check the ground, see if we got anything funky like that. Like I was saying, you, you won't usually have only one leg pulling high out of three. So when we went between them here, they were all equal right at 1.6 on each one of them, including the third one there. 1.6. Here's our problem. We go to ground, which I picked the piece of conduit up here. There we go to that transformer. Maybe that's, yeah, there we go. From the transformer, we got one and a half ohms to ground. I'm going to isolate the motor. I just checked them to ground and it still has short to ground. We'll go ahead and do a reset and we'll check voltage. Make sure we got all three legs. So there goes the compressor. Four, 461, 459, 461. So we'll go ahead and kill that there. Like I said, we got that isolated. Unfortunately, if somebody flips on that switch, it's gonna run until it eventually trips. You can see the oil in there, which is kind of cool. That's a big old monster side glass. Gonna get up there and isolate that wire out and then, like i said if it's still shorted up there that eliminates the wire in the conduit which i would doubt it's it but i'm gonna do it make sure before i condemn it the ladder here makes me think that that might be what they were doing was checking it you can see we had cardboard from sometime and sometime up here okay we'll get on over to it you can see that thing oh wow Look at the end of that motor. You can see the fan. The fan is completely broke loose from the shaft. So it probably got so hot that it freaking uh, fried itself. Let's go ahead and get these isolated. I don't got anything to hold this phone. So we're gonna go ahead and get this undone. I'll be right back. All right, going from a screw hole here to the, we've got 0.9 it has it on all of them so we just stepped them from there i don't want to chop off my good wire because that's i'm going to need every bit i can get not to get our information as best we can here on this tag back when they actually made tags that actually you could see what was going on it didn't just wipe off in this cheap sticker crap so yeah now we'll get that information. Gonna have to order it and then come back. Uh, this thing probably weighs two or three pounds. I'm sure, it'll be a fun one to try to get up here. We do have this bar up here we could lift it up on. Uh, three belts. They're all freaking different lengths. And like I said, I thought I heard squealing. Maybe it was the motor squealing. I thought it was the bearings, but I guess we'll see. All right, as you can see, it spins pretty freely. I've shaken it, spun it no noise no shake now this up here oh yeah it's it's crispy it's crispy critter it's screwed that's that's where my squeal came from when i come back in i'll i'll give it a squat squirt of oil yeah that, that thing's just from the air movement of the other units it's still turning so that's good it's one less thing we'd have to change it's kind of nice bearing set up there i mean i've never seen that too much see how you just got around a nice outside edge you just loosen those up and looks like you can pull them right off i'm sure it's probably not that easy but it sure looks like it is that's back when we used to use our brains when we engineered stuff probably why it's still running all these years so i got the motor plate the pulley really don't feel too horribly bad it's pretty pretty decent so we need some VX83, it looks like. Yeah, V83. So I got them stored down there for when we need them. 
That'll make that easy. Yeah, we get across this there, but lifting that up there, uh, if I had another person help me, it probably won't be that big of a deal. Otherwise, it's got to hoist it up there. I'm sure that's a 10 horse motor. I'm sure it weighs a couple pounds. All right, so the way I usually check my shaft size is usually I have a hard time, especially if you're up here and you're not gonna get your tape measured there very easy. I found it just to be easier to kind of go through and just snug her up until she just barely fits and then check it off of that. And then this outside here actually was bigger. So it's inch and five eighths on that one and inch and three eighths on the other. Motor's loose, it's ready to be yanked down. They told us to go ahead and get it. Overnight it if they need to. Uh, just gotta see if we can find somebody that can find us the motor. Okay, I went ahead and killed the power over there at the uh, disconnect, which I'll show you in a sec. Also left a tag here, day's date, what's wrong, keep it off. And then, like I said, that disconnect, which way over here. Right here. You gotta get us a tag for it. That one's down. Obviously, it must have problems with the south one too. Which I wonder if you couldn't steal the motor off of it, but we're not gonna mess with that. North unit's still running. All right, guys, so we're back today. We got a motor uh, expedited here. I got the other one out. I forgot to start recording. So that one's gotta have the pulley yanked off, which we're gonna do. Uh, it's a little warm up here. You can kind of see the sweat coming down. So I'm not wasting a lot of time up here at all. Uh, basically went across that. I didn't bring my trolley because I didn't know I was gonna need it. I've got one guy kind of helping, but you can see bringing that across there wouldn't have mattered. There would have been really very little. I mean, you could have probably figured out something, but that would have been a pain, Heine. It's better off just to get somebody to help you carry it, two people, and get it over to here, and then lift it up, lift the other one, get it up there and get her in. So right now we've got her mounted. I'm flipping the nuts upside down. We'll see if that works a little bit better. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, we just split it out and that made it a lot easier. Uh, gotta make sure high voltage is set right. You can see we got a wiring diagram right there and uh, get that right in the same spot the other one went and uh, hopefully we'll get her going here shortly. 14 amp full load. All right. So we have different ones we could throw in there. We checked the 55, it's rated for what? 14 full load. 14 full load. So theoretically that would be our max out on what that motor's capable anyhow. So we should be all right. A reset, power's dead, check, verified with everything, leg to leg and to ground. We're good to go there. I put it back the way we had it, which is one, two, and three. We're gonna see how the rotation is. If it's right, great. If not, I'll probably find the other end and correct that so that we don't have to remark it. We got the motor mounted up, everything's good to go. Sorry guys, I didn't have my bracket. And like I said, it's hotter than heck in here, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. But we got it lined up. We use a straight edge. She's good to go. We're gonna see how it does. We made sure we kind of got the angle there in the back a little bit higher so that we're technically level. And uh, we need to check out the digital level yet. But other than that, that's, you know, there's only so much to show you. We, we made sure that the wire nuts are taped and everything's back together. How to get a new reducer there on that part there. I can't believe, you know, that head on that, uh, even though that's probably three quarter, the head on it is half. But that wire was just thick insulation. It wasn't really heavier gauged. So we're good on that. We're gonna kick it on, bump it, and see if uh, which way this thing's rolling. All right, maintenance guy's got us on. We're gonna make sure we're going clockwise facing the pulleys. Unfortunately, we're gonna need to stay off the side a little bit here and flip that switch. Should have actually probably done that with, with from the disconnect tell you what go ahead and flip that disconnect back off again turn it yeah dude I'm gonna turn it on inside here after you got it on turn it all right I'm gonna close the door you go ahead and bump it back on. yep all right go ahead and kill it we're good 
so it's the right direction. Wow, there we go. We got to get that uh, safety uh, grill on there. It's nice and smooth, no noises. Oh wow, that feels actually kind of good. We're getting some leakage around here somewhere. Compressor's on. Talk about an old beast. This is a... I bet that thing weighs a pound or two. So, side glass is flashing, but so is some of the other ones. These things are freaking old. Oil. Actually looks kind of clean, I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna check the amp draw real quick. So what we got here, we just dangle a little bit so we're not getting them in there. Good, we're under. 10.5, 10.7, beautiful. 10.8, beautiful. Beautiful. Right away, four frames. Can't ask for better than that. It'd be nice that actually locked and closed. That's yeah, we gotta come up and reset it all the fucking time. We'll trip on high head. Oh, that's well, I can imagine this is water cooled. Is this got a cooling tower up on the roof. I think so. so it's pump and dump. Down in here, that's it. And then where's the water go? Down drain. Yep. Wow. Back in the day when water didn't matter. Well water, boy. You guys ever clean them? That's <laughs> funny. See your steam traps right there. Here's your TXP. She's an old wilder base, but she's running. All right. So it's most likely R22. It says here, yeah, full load amps 13.5, 40, 10 horse, 35 pa 38 pounds, 38 pounds of R22. Wow, check that out. So, yep, go and get that grill on there. I think we're gonna call it a day, guys. It's uh, it's hot o'clock, and uh, I think it's about time to go go home. This uh, would need converted if we're gonna add anything to it because I know it's gonna be probably a hungry hog. And you see some of these other ones must have been running 34a uh, it's just these things are unbelievable that worked really good learn it down they're gonna deal with that tomorrow so we don't have to get it out of here which is awesome you can see right there txb sweat nice but that's the outgoing side and you've got looks like an unloader of some sort or actually a head pressure control device i've seen this put on other units kind of an interesting there but nothing hopefully that's not rubbing against nothing good way to get a leak there we go that's all good they put this on the incoming side they really should have put this water on the outgoing side keeping it pressurized so when it shuts off it keeps water in there for the next start it's hard to believe that was done wrong uh, makes you wonder if it was screwed up when they actually correct or replaced it you see the uh, galvanized crap there we only got some crazy heat for a while. There's a freeze control, it looks like. Yep, freeze control. In case it gets too cold, fan's not working, whatever the case. And then the evaporator must be probably vertical right here, and then out it goes. There's some big old ducks. Quack, quack. All right, it feels like it's cool back here, so it's working. That's the grills right there, I bet you. Yeah, they got this going all the way across the ceilings. So it blows down through here. So this one's down there and down there. Just diffuser. See it in hospitals a lot of times. We're coming down pretty quick. It's only 65 so far, but definitely better than 80 in here. It's coming down. Well guys, it's very hot up here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I am drenched. I mean, completely drenched. It's that little fan, that little Milwaukee fan over there, Believe it or not, it made a huge difference. I mean, wow, unbelievable. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll post it up. Uh, next week I will be working remotely away from this place, from Ohio, be working in California. 
in New Mexico, then Texas, all the way to the East Coast and up to Maryland. So I'll have to tell you about that adventure. So it'll be quite interesting. I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.